Hello everyone, this is Dr. Karens, and this is a video um, to help you work through the practice problems related to replication of animal viruses. And you can use this video to also help you work out the um, problems on the viral replication activity that you're going to complete in your groups. So let's, um, let me reiterate a few things about viral replication. Um, when a virus infects a cell, and in this case, we're talking about an animal cell. When a virus infects a cell, what does it have to do? It has to attach to the cell. It has to enter the cell for the ultimate goal of forcing that host cell to make more copies of the virus. And then ultimately those virus, new virus particles are gonna leave that cell and go on and infect more cells. Well, what does it mean to make more copies of a virus? A virus consists of a genome, some type of nucleic acid and proteins. So in order to make more copies of a virus inside the host cell, two things have to happen. The host cell needs to make more copies of the viral genome and it has to make more viral proteins. Now this can be a simple process or it could be a little more complicated depending on what that viral genome actually is. So if you recall from chapter 13, viruses can be made up of multiple types of nucleic acids. It could be made of double-stranded DNA, single-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA or single-stranded RNA, and it could be positive or minus single-stranded RNA. So depending on what exactly that viral genome is can make it either really easy for the host cell to do these two things, to make more copies of the viral genome and to make more viral proteins, or it could be a little more difficult. For example, if a virus is made up of double-stranded DNA, well then replicating the virus itself is actually really easy for an animal cell host cell to do because the host cell already knows what to do with double-stranded DNA because that's what makes up the genome of the animal cell to begin with, right? So to make more copies of double-stranded DNA, all that cell has to do is do DNA replication, which it already knows how to do. In order to make more viral proteins, Great, I can use that if I'm the host cell, I can use that double-stranded DNA that comes from the virus and I can do transcription to make messenger RNA and then I can do translation with that messenger RNA. Simple. But if the virus is made up of something different other than double-stranded DNA, it's a little more complicated. And the host cell has ways to do it, but it's a little more complicated. So you have to think about or I should say, really, the host cell has to think about, okay, if I'm trying to make more copies of this virus, and I need, and that means I need to make more viral genome, and I need to make more viral proteins, all right, well, what, what do I need to use as a template to make more of that viral genome? And if I'm trying to make viral proteins, I need messenger RNA to do that. What is my messenger RNA going to be? So these practice problems, which you should have access to right now, you should have either printed out those problems or have them open up on your computer so you can work on them as we go through this video. Those questions in that practice, uh, viral replication practice document, and in the viral replication activity that you're going to work on in your groups. Um, I'm really asking you these two questions. What is the template that the host cell is going to use in order to make more viral protein, or sorry, in order to make more viral genome? And what is the RNA that the host cell is going to use to make more viral proteins? And ultimately, what I'm asking you then is, how is this host cell making more copies of this virus? So let's look at the picture that's given to you in your textbook. And I'll walk you through what this says if you are looking at this and you're not, you were not 
clear at all what you're looking at. Let's walk through this and then we'll use the actual sequences in that practice document. So in this image on the left here, it's showing you the virus that has entered the host cell consists of positive single-stranded RNA. That's the viral genome. So that first question I'm asking is, what is the template that the host cell is going to use to make more copies of this? Why do you need a template? Well, because you cannot just randomly put together nucleic acids and make more copies of what you are given. You have to have a template first that's complementary to what you are given so you can build off that template and make more copies of what you're given. So if what we're given here is you're the host cell and you are given a piece of positive single-stranded RNA from this virus and the virus is telling you, you need to make more of this, well, what do you do? I need a template first. So the host cell is gonna make the complementary sequence. So it's gonna put together a complementary negative single-stranded RNA molecule and use this as the template to make more copies of that positive single strand in RNA it was given. So that's how the viral genome will be replicated. We make the complement first, and then we can make more of that genome. Then the second question is, what messenger RNA molecule will the host cell use to make more viral proteins during translation? Remember, from chapter seven, the genetics chapter, messenger RNA is positive single-stranded RNA. Well, in this case, the viral genome is already in messenger RNA format because it is positive single-stranded RNA. So the host cell will use that viral genome directly as messenger RNA, translate it and make viral proteins. In this second picture, the virus that enters the cell is negative single-stranded RNA. How do we make more of that? How do we replicate this genome? We need to make a template first. What is the template gonna be? It's gonna be complementary to this viral genome. So the host cell makes positive single-stranded RNA. That's complementary to that negative single-stranded RNA. The positive single-stranded RNA will serve as the template to make more copies of that negative single-stranded RNA genome and the host cell will use this positive single-stranded RNA as messenger RNA and do translation to make viral proteins. In this last example, the virus is double-stranded RNA. In order to make more copies of a double-stranded nucleic acid, whether you're DNA or RNA, you need to separate the strands and use both of those strands as templates. And that's what happens. And think about it, that's what happens in DNA replication too. If you're trying to make more copies of double-stranded DNA, you just separate the strands and use them both as templates. It does the same thing here. The host cell will unwind this double-stranded viral genome, use both of those complementary strands as templates to make more of a double strand. And because this is RNA, the complementary strands, one of them is negative and one of them is positive. So the positive strand is going to serve as the messenger RNA during translation to make viral proteins. All right, so let's look at the viral replication practice document that I attached to this video and, and answer these questions using actual sequences. So here's question one. You are given a virus here. Here is the virus. It consists of double-stranded DNA. Here is the sequence. So this is the viral genome. This is what has entered the host cell. So in part A, I'm asking you, what is the template that the host cell is going to use to make more copies of this viral genome? Stop the video here. Think about it, write down what you think is the answer, and then come back and we'll work through it. All right, so because this is this virus in this example is double stranded DNA, the host cell already knows what to do with double stranded DNA. The virus is telling the host cell, 
you need to make more copies of my genome. Well, the genome is double-stranded DNA. So really, it, the virus is telling the host cell, you need to do DNA replication to make more copies of me. Well, what serves as the template during DNA replication? Again, we have a double-stranded molecule here. Both of those strands will be separated and both of them are used as templates to make more copies of the double strand. So if you are starting with a double stranded virus, whether it's DNA or RNA, both of the strands are, be, are gonna be used as your template to make more of that double strand. Letter B, what is the mRNA that the host cell will use to make viral proteins? Stop the video. Think about it and then come back. All right, because this, again, in this example, the virus is double-stranded DNA. And I'm asking you, tell me what the messenger RNA is going to be to make the viral proteins. Well, I'm really asking you to do transcription here. I'm asking you to use this double-stranded DNA molecule to make your messenger RNA. And that's what the host cell is gonna do. The host cell is given a genome from the virus and it somehow has to use that genome to make messenger RNA so it can do translation and make viral proteins. So how do we do that? Messenger RNA is positive single-stranded RNA. Right? So the host cell is going to take the negative strand of that double stranded DNA and use that as a template to make the positive single stranded RNA in messenger RNA format. And so here is the sequence A U C G G A. There's a U here because it's RNA. This is complementary to the negative DNA strand from the viral genome. That's what happens during transcription. You take double-stranded DNA, one of the strands is used to make your messenger RNA. And it has to be the negative strand of the DNA that you're going to use because the RNA has to be positive. So this right here is the sequence of the messenger RNA from the virus that the host cell is going to use during translation to make viral proteins. Let's move on to question two. I'm asking the same questions, but the virus has changed. Now the virus is positive single-stranded RNA. Here is the sequence. So what is the template that the host cell will use to make more copies of this double-stranded RNA molecule? Sorry, single-stranded RNA molecule. Positive single-stranded RNA. The host cell needs to make more of it. What is the template that's gonna be used? Stop the video, think about it, and then come back. All right, if we have a single strand, that's our viral genome, and we need a template to make more of it, the template is gonna be complementary to what we are given. So we use that genome to create the complementary strand, and the complementary strand shown here is what will be used as the template to make more of what we started with. We started with positive single-stranded RNA, so the template to make more of that is going to be the negative single-stranded RNA. Letter B, what is the messenger RNA that the host cell will use to make viral proteins? Stop the video, think about it, and then come back. All right, because the virus, the genome of the virus, is positive single-stranded RNA, that in itself is already in messenger RNA format because messenger RNA is positive single-stranded RNA. So the host cell will use the viral genome itself, the positive strand of that RNA. We'll use that directly as messenger RNA to make viral proteins. All right, the last example. Again, I'm asking you the same questions but the virus has changed. Now our virus is negative single-stranded RNA. What is the template that will be used by the host cell to make more copies of this negative single-stranded RNA genome? Stop the video, think about it, and then come back. We need the complement. So we're gonna make, the host cell is gonna make the positive strand 
that's complementary to the negative single-stranded RNA genome. What is the messenger RNA that will be used to make viral proteins? Stop the video, think about it, and then come back. Again, messenger RNA is positive single-stranded RNA. We generated that in letter A, and so that is the positive single-stranded RNA that will be used as messenger RNA during translation to make viral proteins. So that's the end of the practice document. Um, there is no double-stranded RNA on that practice worksheet, but just to reiterate how that works again, I'm going to go back to this. So again, looking at this picture, what happens here? If you have a double-stranded RNA molecule, both of the strands need to be used as templates to make more copies of that double strand. And one of those strands is positive single-stranded RNA. So that's what will be used to make your as your messenger RNA in order to make your viral proteins. So come back and look at this video as many times as you need to to work your way through those practice problems, but then also use it as you're trying to complete the actual activity with your groups. And if you've got any questions, um, please come to me and we can work on it together. It's important that you know how to do this and that you understand what I'm asking you and you understand how to come up with the answers because you're going to see this on your exam. So again, let me know if you've got any questions.